I was so livid that I realized if this guy is now a serving congressman, he doesn't deserve that job. It's horrendous that he could lie and steal and cheat his way through life, and now he's somebody that we are supposed to trust. It's, it's just disgusting. It's horrible. That Navy veteran is accusing Congressman George Santos of raising money to save his dying therapy dog back in 2016 and then keeping the money for himself. Santos did not respond to a request for comment from NBC News, but he has responded with a tweet, quote, the reports that I would let a dog die is shocking and insane. My work in animal advocacy was the labor of love and hard work. Over the past 24 hours, I've received pictures of dogs I helped rescue throughout the years, along with supportive messages. These distractions won't stop me. And if that wasn't enough, you know, I keep saying, let's move on from George, let's move on from George, but these things keep happening. The latest, a Brazilian drag performer recently posted a photo of herself and another person in drag who she claims is George Santos and looks a whole lot like George. He tweeted that accusation was categorically false. Santos has apologized for lying about his background and has said he has done nothing unethical. Let's discuss with Simone Sanders Towson, former chief spokesperson for Vice President Harris and host of the show Simone on Peacock and MSNBC and Mark McKinnon, former advisor to both George W. Bush and John McCain. He is one of the co-hosts of The Circus on Showtime. Simone, I get it. Two weeks ago, Kevin McCarthy needed Santos's vote, needed Santos's vote. McCarthy has the gavel now. At what point does he move George Santos from the asset column to the liability column and send him packing. Well, the, I think the the thing that Republicans in the House are weighing, Steph, is in fact that the majority is very slim, and so every seat matters. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately for Republicans, George Santos is a seat that matters. Uh, can I just say, as a former <laughs> communications professional, the thing for me that was really the rub was the statement that he put out on Twitter, and he says he's received photos. Comms 101, let's get the validators and put them out there. Where are these people? Send them to the reporters that requested comment from uh, Congressman Santos. Have them post their own. We, we have not seen these individuals, and I'm concerned we haven't seen them because they possibly don't exist. I was thinking that same thing. If all these people came forward, show us your cute little pups. Mark, same question to you. Well, what's playing out is that Kevin McCarthy's short-term strategy of, 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 of seating people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and, and not throwing uh, George Santos out on his ear immediately just testifies to the fact that they were more interested in the short-term gain than the long-term strategic downside for Republicans, which is that the public now is just seeing that they really don't care about character, about integrity, uh, about anything other than that slim majority of votes that they're hanging on to. And George Santos is exhibit A. I mean, look how much oxygen he has taken up and look how much oxygen Marjorie Taylor Greene and the others of the crazy caucus have taken up just in the last two weeks. I think Americans were hoping that with the divided government, they get Republicans to normalize, and they've gotten just the opposite. And, you know, the thing with George Santos is that the story just gets worse and worse and worse, and it just gets more oxygen. And the bigger question now is, is anything that George Santos ever said true? If George Santos walks like a duck, he talks like a duck. Ladies and gentlemen, George Santos is a duck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, 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 there is obviously nothing wrong, Mark, with being a drag queen performing in drag, but a whole lot of Republicans have taken issue with it this year. How does that go over with them? Well, that's it, and that's why it's, you, can, you can feel them squirming in their seats, because the worst thing you can do in, in politics really is, is, is be a hypocrite, and, there's, and this is an example where George Santos is sort of standing up on the side of people who worked actively against people in this community. And it turns out he was part of that community. So uh, it's, it's one thing to, you know, stand up and, and say uh, that or deny that what you're doing. It's another thing to have others saying, well, listen, he was with us and standing with us and now he's standing against us. Simone, let's talk about these committee assignments, because Politico is reporting that some in the White House are, quote, excited over these far-right radical Republicans ending up on the Oversight Committee. You work for this White House. 
I don't know, that doesn't sound right. Should they be happy about this? Shouldn't they care about good governing, who, who, whatever side of the aisle you're on? Well, Steph, I am I am doing some very master rip, lip reading right now because I dropped a little of my IFB. But I saw mm -hmm. what you put up on the screen, and I could imagine your question was, how could they be excited about this? And I, I think I would just say... Look, oversight is going to be quite difficult um, when it comes for this White House, reg regardless of who is on that committee. With, with the people who are currently on it, it is truly red meat for the base. I would argue that it quite possibly be preliminary for some of my former colleagues to be excited about this. We think that you know, everyone is like us, keyed in politicos who are paying attention to the details, who care about everything down to the nitty gritty. But the reality is the majority of the American people, they read headlines, they only see sound bites. And the things that have the potential to come out of this oversight committee, of the hearings that they will do, of the investigations that they will open, they have the potential to break through to the American people if they are not properly countered by folks either in the White House or allies of the president. And if this, if the documents, um, Situation that the president is currently dealing with is any example, I think that outside allies have struggled to rally around the president in a way in which I think they should. So I, I don't know if I would be high-fiving, but this is uh, these are not serious folks that Kevin McCarthy has put on this committee. Damn, you are a master lip reader. If we knew how good you were, you should have been here between the 14th and 15th vote so we could have known what all those Republicans were saying to one another on the floor two weeks ago. Mark, what do you think the impact is going to be from these far-right Republicans on committees? Here, here's the problem, Stephanie. It, the problem is going to be when oversight becomes overreach. And it's pretty clear that when you put the kind of people on these committees who've made a name for themselves by being leading the Freedom Caucus and by uh, putting up outrageous charges and, and calling for just the sort of investigations that are so beyond the pale, this is the sort of thing where... McCarthy has a uh, has a predecessor in the Republican Party, and when he jumped the shark was when he started calling for when he went beyond. He first was out in communists in the Congress, and then uh, he he began investigating the army. So now Kevin McCarthy's got people on oversight committees that are now starting to investigate the FBI and other security forces in America. So. That's the sort of thing where people are going to say, no, wait a minute, that, that's, when we want oversight, that's not what we're talking about. Buckle up, kids. The U.S. just hit its debt limit, and the stage is now set for a major partisan battle in Washington. Today, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen told House Speaker Kevin McCarthy extraordinary steps are now underway so the U.S. can keep paying its debts until early June. But she urged Congress to act promptly to protect the full faith and credit of the United States. That means an increase in the debt ceiling, which Republicans will not agree to without spending cuts. But the White House says, not a chance. President Biden didn't mention the issue as he toured storm damage in California earlier today. But he did talk about the classified material found in his home and office. They were his first remarks about the documents since the special counsel was named. We found a handful of documents were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. We immediately turned them over to the archives and the Justice Department. We're fully cooperating and looking forward to getting this resolved quickly. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. There's also big news tonight in another important investigation. Late today, the Supreme Court said it had not found whoever leaked a draft of the opinion overturning Roe versus Wade. The official who investigated said 97 court employees who were interviewed denied leaking the document, but several did admit they talked to their spouses about the draft. Carry on, love. The last thing before we go tonight, remembering a rock legend. Two-time Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee David Crosby has died at the age of 81. Our friend Lester Holt, fellow musician, has a look back on his incredible life and extraordinary career. You know we're writing.
on the Marrakesh Express. David Crosby was a music legend, a member of two of the most iconic bands of the 1960s. Hey, Mr. play a song for me. Playing first with the birds. Getting to the point. Becoming a founding member of the supergroup Crosby, Stills and Nash, later joined by Neil Young. Also a talented songwriter, Crosby was a rare two-time Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee. Born in Los Angeles in 1941, Crosby dropped out of college to pursue music. He led the life of a true rock star. He battled drug and alcohol addiction and was arrested in the 1980s for drug and weapons charges. Talking about those struggles on the Today Show in 1998. Walking around with no brains, he'd do a lot of dumb stuff. And, uh, and uh, I did, you know, and I make no bones about it. Uh, the, it just makes me all that much more grateful, you know, that I, that I lived through it and came out the other side. After spending time in jail, Crosby got clean and spent several more decades on the road touring, later making headlines for donating his sperm to fellow singer Melissa Etheridge so she could have children with her partner. Tonight, Crosby's family says the 81-year-old passed away after a long illness, his wife and son there by his side. His wife Jan sharing, although he is no longer here with us, his humanity and kind soul will continue to guide and inspire us. His legacy will continue to live on through his legendary music. It is safe to say there will never be anyone quite like David Crosby.